You know, when I went to school in college, to, I was going into pre-med and I was studying microbiology. You know, one of the things that you learn about your body is that there's much of it that you can't control. Certainly your breathing, your lungs and all, are part of the involuntary system that your body operates. It's, it's not attached to the skeleton like the voluntary muscles are. So it, they just kind of act independently, you know? It, the, the minute you have to start saying to yourself, breathe in, breathe out, you got problems. You either have a cold or someone sitting on your chest or you're about, you know, squeeze into a little place and you think you're going to die. Then you start thinking about your breathing, but when all is well, you don't give it a thought all day. You just breathe because God does that. And literally in your body's function, everything that determines life and that is, is essential to life, vital body functions are all part of that same involuntary system. Your heart beats your kidneys function, so does your liver, so does your lungs. You don't control much. You can decide whether you're going to get up and sit down or where you're going to walk to or what you're going to put in your hands or what you're going to swallow. But other than that, you know, your body functions all on its own. And Daniel says to Belshazzar, you've picked the wrong God. You've picked the wrong God to worship, and now it's too late. You've picked the wrong God. You should have picked the one that holds your breath in his hands. But you didn't. And he says in verse 24 to him, the fingers of the hand were sent from him. And this writing was written, and this is the inscription written upon it, many, many tekelu farsim. And this is the interpretation of each word. Many, God has numbered your kingdom and finished it. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and been found wanting. Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. And Belshazzar gave the commandment to clothe Daniel with purple, put a chain of gold around his neck and make a proclamation concerning him that he should be third in the kingdom. Verse 24, the true God, the one you've refused, has sent his hand and this message. Now the word meaning mini is pronounced there twice. Hebrew, when you repeat something, it is always for emphasis. It is the Hebrew practice of putting exclamation points, if you will. The word mini comes from the word mina, which was a 50 shekel coin. Literally it means numbered. Here, to help you remember it, the Lord literally says to him twice, your number is up. The true God who's in charge of the world and its kingdoms has brought your rulership and power and time to an end. Tonight you're going to have a meeting with God. And he repeats it for emphasis. You know, you have a number and eventually it'll be up. Don't know how many days you have left. Like I said, when you're a kid, you seem immortal. If you're 16, you say one day you're going to die, they'll go, whatever. That is if they pay attention to you at all. Even folks in their 40s and 50s will oftentimes try to change careers because they realize they've been at that same job for so long, they want something new in life. And they're still looking forward. By the time you get to 60 and 70 and beyond, you start looking backward. Where are my high school buddies? Are they still alive? I went to my reunion. There were six of us. <laughs> and frailty becomes more pronounced, and now you have to think before jumping off or over that wall. And only your mind thinks that you're still capable. Your body would beg to differ. <laughs> you're running out of days. For Belshazzar, his number was up, which is why Moses wrote, in Psalm 90, Lord, teach us to number our days so that we could have a heart that would gain wisdom. Let us use what time we have well, because if we spend it in the wrong manner, we can't redeem it, and there aren't very many of them. Let's make sure that we use them well.